Originally, I thought the 1971 Daytona 500 was the very first restricted plate race ever. However, while researching for that episode, I found out that the race was not the first ever NASCAR race with restricted plates. However, it is the first 500 with plates, but not the first NASCAR plate race ever. Thankfully, I fact-checked and double-checked the sources and did not do what I did for the IndyCar race at Darlington. Feel free to check out that episode. Also, I explained the issues with that episode. Anyway, it is also a blessing in disguise because I learned something new about this episode. The race itself. The 1970 Yankee 400 at Michigan International Speedway. It was the 34th race of the 1970 NASCAR Grand National Series, a.k.a. the NASCAR Cup Series. 34,500 fans attended the 400 mile event on August 16th, 1970. In 1970, the schedule was 48 races long. What was the reason NASCAR went plate racing at the Irish Hills? Well, restricted plates were implemented in NASCAR first summer around the 1970 season. Big block engines were taken over NASCAR, so every engine above 358 CI was to have a restricted plate. So that was the purpose of the very first restricted plate race. Let's talk about the race itself. And before I get to the race, I want to let y'all know that there's no known footage of the 1970 Yankee 400. I tried to find footage of the race, but I just couldn't. So, yeah, so bear with me here. I will add pictures and other clips related to, like, the 1970 NASCAR Michigan race, which is the Motor City 400, if possible. So, yeah, bear with me here. Charlie Glassback started on the pole for the race alongside with Bobby Isaac, who was going after his first championship. Glassback's pole speed was a 157.363 miles per hour. The pole speed was 2.772 miles per hour slower than Kale Yarbrough's pole speed of 160.135 miles per hour for the inaugural Motor State 500 back in 1969, and it was 4.351 miles per hour slower than K David Peterson's pole speed of 161.714 miles per hour for the Yankee 600. That is how effective the plates were for the 1970 Yankee 400. Before the race started, Cecil Gordon, who was the only driver that was driving a 1968 car, which was his 1968 Ford, had engine issues that, and did not complete a single lap of the race. The race was underway between lap 1 through 27. Ten drivers were out of the race. Three drivers, Dave Marcus, Henley Gray, and Friday Hasler were out due to engine issues. Ron Keselowski was out due to rear end issues. David Pearson was out due to ignition issues. Leroy Carrick was out due to fuel pump issues. Frog Fagan, man, what a name, was out due to transmission issues. Buddy Arrington was out due to alternator issues. Roy Tyner was out due to battery issues. And Ben Arnold was out due to exhaust issues. Between lap 1 through 37, there were three different leaders and five lead changes between Charlie Glossback, Richard Petty, and Kel Yarbrough. Charlie has led 23 of those laps combined so far. Glassback has been the dominant driver early in the going. Between lap 42 through 86, there have been three different leaders, which were Bobby Isaac, Leroy Yarbrough, and Donnie Allison, and five lead changes. Once again, Charlie Glassback has been a dominant driver by leading 31 laps. The only driver that has DNF during those 44 laps was Larry Baumel due to overheating. Coming close to the halfway mark, Bobby Allison will take the lead on lap 87 until the dominant Charlie Glassback took back the lead on lap 93. He would lead 27 more laps, dominating the first half of the Yankee 400. As for Donnie Allison, not so much. After passing the halfway mark, Donnie would finish behind the wall on lap 101 due to engine issues. He led three laps. Three laps later, Bill Sheary was out of the race due to an oil leak. From lap 120 through lap 142, two more lead changes took place between Bobby Allison and Kale Yarbrough. While Bobby and Kale did lead changes, three more drivers DNF. Bill Champion was out of the race due to an oil leak. Earl Brooks was out due to oil pump issues, and John Sears was out of the race due to ignition issues. The last 54 laps of the race had four lead changes from three different leaders with one different driver. Charlie Glassback led 20 more laps until Benny Parsons took the lead away from the dominant Charlie Glassback. 22 years later, Kale Yarbrough took the lead away from lap 185. It looked like Kale had the race in the bag until his engine blew up on lap 188. The first caution was finally out for Kale's engine being blown up. He would DNF and finish 10th. The caution would not only be the only caution of the race, but it would end the race. 
Charlie Glatzbach, who dominated the race by leading 116 of the scheduled 197 laps, would win the 1970 Yankee 400 at Michigan. This was Charlie's third career cup win out of four. Bobby Allison would finish second, and Richard Brooks would finish in third. Benny Parsons would finish eighth. The race lasted two hours, 48 minutes, and 32 seconds with 18 lead changes. Although the race did not look like a big deal or not important, this is probably a filler and pointless episode to some people. But the reason why I made this episode because it is a historical NASCAR moment due to the race being the very first restricted plate race ever in NASCAR ever, for better or for worse. After that, restricted plates were in use for certain races from 1971 through 1974. After that, the restricted plates became a permanent thing for Daytona and Talladega in 1988 after Bobby Allison's horrifying accident back in 1987 at Talladega. Sadly, we are still seeing restricted engine racing in the Cup Series with the atrocious 550 package for the intermediates. And Xfinity ran some restricted plate races at Indy from 2017 through 2019 and in Pocono, Michigan back in 2018. Also, Cup did plate racing outside of Daytona and Talladega as well. The 2000 Dual Loop 300 at New Hampshire and the 2018 All-Star Race. Which is why we have the 550 package and why you guys are seeing that package. Yeah, plate racing is a thing for better or for worse. Which is why it's still one of the most controversial moments in NASCAR history. Looking back at it, it is an interesting race to do research on. Even though there's no video of the race. But yeah, the 1970 Yankee 400 is a historical moment for NASCAR. If there was anything I got wrong or missed about the 1970 Yankee 400, please feel free to tell me in the comments below. A lot of help would be appreciated. Anyway, that is going to do it for another episode of Racing Stories. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Comment, like, and subscribe for more content and for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for supporting E-Nation. This is Press 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.